we've seen a renewal of our understanding of and definition of what circus is. When I'm up there, when I'm performing, it feels freeing. There's so many different things that you can try and there's kind of a place for everybody. There's, there are no limitations on what, what you can change and what you can play with and what you can tweak to create something new. My name is Joel Malkoff. I'm from Indiana, I'm 24 years old, and I'm a, a tight wire artist. I started with skateboarding, and then I started gymnastics at the age of eight. Next up on the floor, Joel Malcolm. And then ended up competing on a junior Olympic level in the United States for a while in gymnastics. From there I transitioned into parkour because I found that gymnastics was restraining creatively. I was talking with a friend of mine about this idea to audition for, for Cirque du Soleil, and uh, hit me like a brick, like, oh god, I have to do that right now while I'm, while I'm still in, uh, quite young, and this is, this is the opportunity now. Traditional circus, then, um, or, you know, classical circus, or, um, was, was never something that I, I was overly attracted to. I, I think, okay, yes, there's amazing movement and things like this, um, but it was this, I, to, to me, for a number, it's a little bit more like build up and trick, and build up and trick. In that way, technically, you get amazing things, but it's, that's a predictable script for, for a movement uh, and for a number. Listen to the music, listen. What happens with the American circus is basically, it's a touring model. This is the era of the railroad. And they found that the railroad was the most effective way to tour with elephants, <laughs> uh, with, with a thousand people, with tents that could sit between you know, a thousand and five thousand people. So it was an idea of uh, grandiose, uh, almost nostalgic as it was happening sense of, sense of circus. Traditional circus was done by families. Traditional circus has a very specific audience dialogue. It has a very uh, specific feel to it. You go, you talk throughout it, you're being wowed, you're being communicated with. In traditional circus, a lot of time and energy and mastery goes into a very specific conversation. And that conversation is usually, look at this incredible thing and now applaud for that incredible thing. Right? It's very clearly laid out. Each act happens and is separate from other acts. Um, the ringmaster is there to guide focus and to give you relevant information. So the traditional circus now in 2018 isn't all that popular. Traditional circus doesn't have the same pull because we have access to television, there are animal rights issues, um, we don't have the same relationship to it. It doesn't hold the same place in cultural identity. So America already had this deeply entrenched experience of circus, of traditional circus, and what it meant for the American identity. Everyone had been there, okay? Then what happens? Television. Television kicked the crap out of circus. <laughs> Can I say that? Television everywhere, once it became rampant, um, you didn't have to travel to go to the circus. You could see amazing things in your own home, which was its own novelty. We've seen the closing of uh, Barnum & Bailey recently. There are very few touring, touring companies left. We've moved on uh, in terms of our expectation of what, what's possible, what's acceptable. Um, the, there's certainly a, an awareness um, in terms of our, our relationship to animals, where we used to be um, sort of impressed at subjugating um, you know, wild animals. Um, we're now impressed with what we can do ourselves. If you see someone in a trapeze act, uh, you think, well, with enough hard work, maybe I could, I could do that. Uh, whereas if you see an animal being tamed, you think, you, it's not the same sort of relationship. We don't identify in the same way, uh, but rather we empathize with the animal. And we start feeling bad about it. So. Uh, the United States still has a really hard time believing that circus is anything other than the tented traditional circus. Uh, because of how ingrained that is in the cultural memory and how it's not just ingrained, it's critical to the development of America's identity. It's taken over the American consciousness. When you, you, know, when you talk about circus, and especially in the U.S., the, you, know, you think of clowns, you think of Barnum and Bailey, you think of elephants, you think of all, all of that, popcorn. Um, but you don't necessarily think of other, other possibilities.
the definition of the very word circus is in flux and is contested by people who deeply love circus arts. <laughs> there's traditional circus, there's new circus, and then there's contemporary circus. New circus, Cirque Nouveau, generally refers to what happened in the 70s. Circus schools start arriving. The people that were making those circus schools and people that graduated from those schools created Cirque Nouveau. In that would be Cirque du Soleil. So they're borrowing uh, or, or integrating theatrical techniques, theatrical lighting. They're still an act-based, right? So act, 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 but the acts are linked through more of a common costuming, a common idea. Uh, often they have musical scores. I think that traditional circus had a lot less narrative and storytelling. And uh, most of the performances and acts that I've been involved with, um, people are trying to say something. And the other thing is just the aesthetic palette that it draws from. Um, the new circus allows for sort of a lot more freedom, I think, uh, than traditional circus. I sort of by definition, traditional circus is established and it has its palette. Uh, new circus can be kind of anything. People are performing in street clothes and they're performing in, you know, crazy outfits. Contemporary circus challenges acts. Contemporary circus offers uh, hybrid uh, forms of circus, essentially, uh, flirting with burlesque, in certain cases, flirting with dance, certainly, contemporary dance, flirting with theater and narrative-driven um, circus as well, and sometimes, uh, and more and more, it's having to flirt with virtual reality, increased reality, and various uh, forms of, of technological intrusions. It's less formulaic. It's essentially, yeah, it doesn't follow a formula in the same way. And contemporary circus, extreme contemporary circus that breaks apart um, act-based formats and uses circus techniques to challenge, um, challenge the way the audience is experiencing an idea. New Circus is somewhere in the middle where it takes a lot of art, brings the art together and uses the art to frame circus and uses circus to explain the art, but without necessarily making the audience uncomfortable. The line between contemporary circus and Nouveau Cirque and New Circus, I would argue, is blurred because there's not a clear differentiation, especially in the United States, between New Circus and contemporary circus. There's not. It's on a continuum. It's not a clear line. Stick around, guys. Stick around. We have more performers coming your way. Lots more cool stuff to go this evening. So Montreal is also, you know, it's a, it's a small city, two million, three million of the suburbs. A very small city by, by world standards. Um, but it has a thriving art scene. It has a very strong uh, and, and very well supported art scene. Uh, it also attracts people from all over the world. So the Europeans come here, the Americans come here. But Montreal essentially becomes a, a meeting ground, a middle ground for various ways of doing circus and thinking about circus. 1960s, cultural revolutions, question everything, popular culture, popular entertainment starts to be reappropriated into performance and social critique. So you have this simultaneous kind of decline of attendance and popularity of traditional circus, and then you have this inquisition into circus techniques. And so you have people from some traditional families or circus training that start to train people outside of the circus for the first time. Montreal's National Circus School comes out of that. Yes, that's it. The official start date for Montreal's National Circus School is 1981. It predates Cirque du Soleil. And the mission of the National Circus School is to develop circus artists. All of them take physical conditioning. The physical conditioning is tailored to their specific specialty. They have a specialty apparatus, so the goal isn't to fit in, ever. The goal is to stand out. So when you ask, what are they training here? I can't tell you all the things they do because they invent new things. The school here is giving me a, um, a chance to really push those skills deeper and, and to feel more developed as an artist. So I, I've just matured in that way. How do you use your body as an artistic medium? Without the, my experience here at the school, without 
delving into the circus arts, I think I'd be a less well-rounded artist. So in Quebec, we've seen a really important uh, circus industry and ecosystem uh, arise. Uh, billion dollar a year plus industry in the city of Montreal uh, alone. Um, the rest of North America, so English Canada and, and the US, um, is, is developing in a less centralized way uh, because there isn't another large Cirque du Soleil, basically. So the Montreal circus scene uh, came about unexpectedly. Um, it spread to the U.S. essentially uh, because of uh, one man's uh, crazy dream. Uh, Guy La Liberté uh, felt that uh, in order for his company, Cirque uh, du Soleil, to thrive and to survive the long Canadian winters, so he felt that going to the U.S. was ultimately the best way to, to ensure survival of the company. And he, and he took a gamble, and the, the gamble paid off. What circus looks like in the United States today is recreational. That's it. Good. Look up, look up, look up. The United States has one of the largest recreational populations in circus arts, and I think that the merit of circus is in recreational practice. When we opened up show, we decided to focus on new circus uh, as opposed to uh, the classical circus model because it's much more accessible for a modern audience. Uh, and it doesn't have animals. Show Circus Studios grown right away as soon as we <laughs> opened up. We started getting bigger and bigger and being able to offer more and more. As far as what the future of New Circus goes, anything I say is going to be kind of a guess, somewhat informed guess, but only somewhat. Um, I think that uh, one of the most important uh, directions that it's moving in is uh, teaching. Uh, the traditional circus taught within families and so it didn't get shared a whole lot and I think that one of the great things that's been happening since, uh, since, I mean, since before I got involved but certainly since I got involved also is that uh, it's, just, it's gotten out there and a lot more people are getting to do it. We're here at the Amherst Block Party. I'm here with Show Circus Studio. I think that small circuses are going to be popping up all over the place and people are going to get inspired by something and they're going to find some way to make it their own thing and create something. And uh, I mean, that's one of the great things about what's happening right now is I feel like it's a great democratization of circus. So circus arts are ever resilient and are integrating themselves into many other kinds of performance. So we'll continue to see circus, and whatever it's called, I'm sure we'll come up with a post-contemporary and a post-modern and a modern-modern and a modern-post-modern and a neo-traditional and whatever else we come up with, whatever the label is. Are we watching humans achieve something that took practice, focus, and that we're experiencing as the pinnacle of human achievement? Then it's circus. When I'm on my wire, I imagine that you need to pull all of your attention and all of your body inwards, in all directions, like three-dimensionally, from, from, from the ground, from the sky, from the sides, like everything in, and that you're pushing everything out at the same time. It's like totally aware of everything going on in your body, even like you're blinking, like your hair being stuck. You, you feel everything, because you need to be so aware. Of it. It's like, you know, it's this big. and. Uh, so it's, it takes a lot of focus, um, but it, it's like uh, unifying opposing forces. You're pushing up and down and out and in all at the same time. Um, and then while you're doing that, you're trying, imagine doing that, having that sense in your head, and then trying to run and slide and jump across something um, and stay centered directly in front of you at the same time. Uh, and try to you know, be connected with your audience at the same time. So it feels beautiful and overwhelming. <laughs> I graduate at the end of next year, and my hope is to tour the world and perform for a while. Uh, hopefully save that money and use that experience to then start my own company or go into a uh, field where I'm helping to educate others. After that, who knows? 